This video is going to show you how to load an array, actually just generally process arrays with counter control loops. We'll be looking at two types of counter control loops, the while loop and the for loop. First we'll look at the while loop. Generally to process an array you're going to notice that these index or the subscript values follow the pattern of a counter. So when you visit the first element of the array, you're at zero. Move on to the next, you're at one. So it's very simple to just use this counter controlled loop, loop through every element of the array, exit when you exceed the last index value, and you've, done, you've processed every element in the array. OK, so this statement here will create a uh, an array called A, uh, size of 5, will be storing integers in that array. One thing about arrays is it can only hold one type of data. So you can't put an integer in, in uh, subscript 0, element 0, and um, a string in element 1. They need to all be the same data type. We will then also have a variable called sub, and we're going to initialize that to 0. Now sub is both our counter and it's going to point to the subscript that we need to use when we want to load the array. So we're going to start our loop while sub is less than or equal to 4. Well, that's test. True. 0 is less than or equal to 4. Head into the loop. And we will uh, prompt the user. I didn't put this in here, but we should prompt the user to input a value. And when they input a value, let's say they keyed in 16, it's going to go into A at sub. Sub is 0. So here is A at 0 and that value will be keyed in there. Then we will increment sub, a typical counter increment, and we will loop back up. When we loop back up, a test occurs. We will be testing a sub less than or equal to 4. Well, sub is 1, so that's a true statement. Back into the loop, and we'll input into A at 1 this time. Let's say 7 was keyed in. Okay. And once again, we will increment sub. So now sub will become 2, and loop back up and do our test. 2 less than or equal to 4, true, input into A at 2. Let's say our user keyed in 10, so A at 2 will hold a 10. Next statement, increment sub again, so sub will become 3. We loop back up, test, 3 is less than or equal to 4 is true, input into A at 3, so let's say 8 it was keyed in this time. So A at 3 will contain an 8. Next statement, once again, increments our subscript, which is also our counter. We loop back up. 4 less than or equal to 4 is a true statement. And so we'll input into A at 4, because sub is 4. Let's say 15 is keyed in for that value. And uh, we will increment sub again. And sub becomes 5. When we loop back up, this ends up becoming a false because 5 is not less than or equal to 4. When the test becomes false, the loop is done, and execution of the next, next statement will be whatever is following the end while. Okay, really very similar is the for loop. However, the for loop kind of builds in and automates some of the tasks. I prefer the for loop because I always like to go the shortest way. So we declare our integer array, and we declare our sub. Notice I did not initialize sub here like we did up here. And the reason you don't need to initialize your subscript is because the for loop will automatically initialize for you. So sub gets initialized to 0 right here. For sub equals 0, that's initializing sub. And then the test is happening here, too. So it's going to test, is this going to exceed, this is my final value. Well, no, this does not exceed my final value. We input into A at 0. Looping back up, okay, we will, t we will increment automatically. A for loop automatically increments when you come back up by 1, unless you have a step and change that step to a different number. So we've incremented by 1. We see, does that 1 exceed the 4? No, it doesn't. And we'll input the next value into the array at our sub of 1. Uh, looping back up, sub becomes 2. And the <coughs> algorithm continues until you've loaded the entire array.